and vengeance. Hi guys, it's me, Sukai Todd, and today I'm here to review THE Batman 2022. And no, I'm not just reviewing this because I'm ultra late to the review train. No. And with that said, let's get into our disclaimers. So, my first disclaimer is... No. I'm not going to be ripping into this movie with hatred and, you know... All pure negativity. No, that's not the point of this review. I actually have a few things that I really enjoy about this movie, so let's be clear on that. So if you do hate this movie, <laughs> you might want to click off. Now, for the other side of the spectrum... If you love this movie and think it's the greatest piece of cinema ever made, I highly suggest you click off because <laughs> I disagree respectfully. <laughs> I do not think it's the bestest Batman film ever. I'm sorry, but that is my opinion, purely subjective. So please keep that in mind for those of you who want to stay and watch this review. These are all my purely subjective opinions. You do not have to agree, agree with any of them. But please, play nice in the comments. And for those of you who are like me and enjoyed both the Batman and the Dark Knight trilogy. Like if you actually enjoyed both of them and see their flaws as well as their merits. Then yeah, you're welcome to stay. But please, Dark Knight fanboys. And Battinson fanboys and girls, play nice in the comments, okay? Just, just, just don't make me turn the comments off, because I will if I have to. Okay. <laughs> As you can tell by the title, this is going to be an extra long review. An extremely long review, because I feel like the movie really deserves it. And I want to really dig into both what I like and what I don't like about the movie. And yes... I sat through the entire 2 hour, 59 minutes, aka 3 hours of this film. So I'm not speaking from a place of just, eh, I like the trailer, or eh, I heard his vengeance voice. No, it's neither of those. I saw the whole thing. The entirety of the film. So before I give my final rating, which will be at the end of this video, I do recommend you watch to the end. Let's get into the characters, starting off with everyone's favorite. <laughs> Something in the way. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't sing that song. I'm not good at singing that song. But I do think the Batman side of Bruce Wayne was actually overall fairly well handled the detective batman slow burn thing i think that was actually a really well written thing but i'll go ahead and say my major gripe with this batman overall is freaking landings like i'm sorry i'm sorry but since i read that they're apparently working on the batman part two then Benson, I know you'll never see this video, but hire a stunt double, please. You have the money. Just hire a stunt double, Bruce. Okay, nobody's going to be offended if you do. And if anyone is offended, I'm sorry. I won't be one of those people. Learn how to land. Especially because my biggest issue is he's in year two. Two. Year two. So that means he should be able to land properly. And there's some moments where he does amazingly, don't get me wrong, but <sighs> the landing is my biggest gripe with the Batman side of Battinson. But for those fangirls who think they're going to get offended, I will tell you right now, no, I'm not offended by the new Batman's, aka Bruce Wayne's, disheveled look. No, he doesn't look disheveled to me. He just looks like he's an insomniac. <laughs> And there is a difference, by the way. <laughs> I know, because I also struggle with insomnia. But I will give you proof that I don't hate Battinson's look as Bruce Wayne. And I think he might be actually half vampire. <laughs> but 
<laughs> no offense, but offense to the Twilight fan people. Sorry, not sorry. Move along. Um, I don't really hate the new Batman's look. I actually think it suits the gothic of Gotham City with what they did with his makeup and his look overall. I don't think he looked, you know, that sleepless, to be honest. I think he looked really good overall. And there were some highlights. <laughs> If you know what I'm saying, for me, as a woman, I enjoyed some of what they showed in terms of Battinson's muscles. <laughs> if you don't already know what I'm saying, you're about to. But yeah, I think Battinson did do a really good job in terms of his Bruce Wayne side overall. But let me show you why I liked his look. <laughs> and yeah, it's not just because I do think he had some character motivation that needed some tweaking. And I don't fully blame Battinson for that. I blame Matt Reeves for that. Sorry, not sorry. But I do think Bruce Wayne in this version needed a bit more motivation besides just Catwoman. Oh yeah, and there's the proof that I didn't hate his look. Right here. <laughs> Enjoy. You're welcome. I mean, I like that moment. <laughs> I don't actually hate Battinson, so let's just be clear. This is proof that I don't hate Battinson. Okay? Okay. I don't. <laughs> I I didn't mind this particular scene. I mean, I had issues with the Riddler's part within the scene, but the scene itself was not hard to look at, you know? <laughs> I saw no, no issue with a little bit of skin showing. <laughs> I'm not offended, but let's get back to things. Yeah, back to Detective Battinson. Okay, I want to repeat this. I do not think that Bruce Wayne had the most character motivation that he needed in this first film. But I'm going to say that doesn't mean he won't have it in the next film, part two of the Batman, which I'm kind of praying is an origin story. You'll see what I mean near the end. But, <laughs> and when I get into Alfred. But I think the Detective Batman angle was actually really brilliant. I just think that a lot of the pacing given to the Bat Detective Battinson angle was not very good. I get why it was paced like that, but there came a point where it's like, is this just Law & Order Gotham City? <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but there were some times where I was just like, can he walk to some other part of Gotham, please? <laughs> like, can he just, like, jump or something? Can he crash through something? Does he have a bat, bat a ring that he can toss at somebody? Just something. As you can tell, I'm more of an action girl. <laughs> I like seeing villains and heroes battle each other. You know, not in every single case, but I think for a movie that was hyped the way it was, this movie particularly, although it is Detective Battinson, I do think what would have helped is if there were more explosives. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I think it would have helped both Paul Dano's Riddler and Detective Battinson's Detective Batman. I feel like there should have been a bit more action, but that's not against the actors in the film. To be honest, I kind of, again, blame Matt Reeves. And that's not a personal attack on Matt Reeves. That's a critique of his writing style. So please keep that in mind. I'm not hating on him as a person at all. <laughs> You've already lost. Call me your boss. Yeah, so let's finally address this elephant in the room. And no, I'm not referring to Andy Sokus as Alfred specifically. Like, I'm not calling him an elephant. <laughs> Please don't misinterpret that. But I do think the whole not dad situation, it just didn't fly with me. <laughs> I'm not saying I don't get why it was there, because I think for the writing of the... Batman. They were trying to kind of create a little, you know, character tension, I guess. But the way they handled Alfred just, I don't know if I can say the words, ticked me off. 
it really infuriated me because I know he's the whole not dead but dead character in this movie. But like, I love me some Anda Circus, okay? I love Anda Circus. So why the freak did they do that to him? Okay, hashtag justice for Anda Circus is Alfred. <laughs> okay, okay. Because I personally loved his Alfred. I thought he was great, but then they pulled that nonsense and that maid that did not look like she was. I'm just going to leave that out. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, justice for Alfred. I hope that when he returns in THE Batman Part 2, that he gives Benson a little lesson in life. <laughs> if you've seen Batman Begins, you know exactly what I'm referring to. <laughs> but, yeah, I hope that Alfred gets his well-deserved justice and a little bit of butt-whooping to the Batman that he deserves and should give to the Batman in the next one. So, yeah. Because, I mean, who doesn't love Alfred? If you don't love Alfred, you don't need to watch this. <laughs> but yeah, I do, s do s I just think that Alfred is a great character and he was severely underutilized. Per usual. But again, I think his writing was great. I think he had a lot of potential. And I think it could have been explored much better. I get why they almost killed him off, but didn't kill him off, which infuriated the living daylights out of me. But, with that said, I think it gave Battenson the much needed motivation that he did desperately, in my opinion, need near the second half of the film. So, although I despise that whole section of the film, <laughs> where they nearly kill him off and Bat. Battenson realizes the power of family more or less and the and what hope is versus what vengeance is. Not saying that that's not good writing, but Alfred better come back with a vengeance. He better return with a little vengeance of his own. <laughs> I want not dad to become dad and kick some Batman butt. Okay? <laughs> Forgive me. But because I really enjoyed his Alfred, that's why I want to see him teach his not son a few lessons in life <laughs> which yes he sort of kind of did what they discussed who didn't or did allegedly kill Pattinson's you know parents which were not shown at all and didn't actually help the story whatsoever in my opinion but I think if he had just had better if he was treated better in terms of the writing of the movie, I think I wouldn't be so upset with what they did to him in the movie. Like, if they had just made it clear that, you know, we're going to waste this guy's talent, skill, and brilliance more up front, <laughs> I wouldn't have been as offended as I was. Because, yes, I was offended. But again, this is my personal opinion. And I know it is part of the slow burn situation, so I'm not critiquing that specifically. But, justice for Alfred, man. <laughs> justice for Alfred. Hashtag justice for Alfred. <laughs> justice for Andy Circus's Alfred. Let's make that a thing to the people who did enjoy it but still think Alfred deserves justice. <laughs> Give not dad Alfred justice, okay? Let's make that, let's, let's petition Matt Reeves to make sure he does that. Okay, okay. <laughs> to talk about the Riddler. We can't have a the Batman review and not discuss the Riddler. Riddler. Sorry if I butcher his name. <laughs> but Paul Dano's Riddler was really amazing at first. Like the first, I want to say hour to hour and a half of his character was really really well written. Like I was genuinely in my seat like jumping back. There were a couple of jump scares in there. Covering my eyes, you know, watching in horror, as Matt Reeves intended, so props to him. Like, the Riddler genuinely scared me for a while. Like, I was really appreciating the work and effort that Paul Dano and the writers, because I know it wasn't solely Matt Reeves, but I appreciated the work that went into creating this new, darker, more you know, so societal commentary slash criminalizing everything Riddler. But with that said, 
There came a point near the near the second, well, I guess it was the third half of the film, midway through the film, where I was just, he lost me. His character just lost me. And I felt so bad, because I'm like, this guy was doing so brilliant. Until he spewed out his master plan in an info dump a la Bane. It's like, dude, nobody cares about the politics from 10 years ago. <laughs> At least in my case, I did not care about all the political jargon that they shoved in there for no real reason, in my opinion. And if you think differently, if you have perspectives as to why they put all that political nonsense into that basically point of where he literally explained his entire master plan somewhat indirectly, but kind of directly to the audience. <laughs> like, it was indirect to Batman, but it was very direct to the audience what he was saying. And it's like, you had me for so long, and then you lost me. You lost me. Riddler. <laughs> I was believing in you, Riddler. I'm not going to say I was rooting for you, because he was a bad guy. But from the perspective of a fan of Batman villains, as well as Batman, I was like, bro, you were doing so well, but he done forgot his point. Because I feel like the point of this new Riddler, for my from my perspective, was that he was the Riddler. He didn't just give anything away at any moment. And he really did do that for a good portion of the film. Until that midway point happened. <laughs> and everything became ex exceedingly clear. And it's like, okay, I see why you're doing this, but you're also revealing your entire second character arc to the audience. Unnecessarily. <laughs> Because at that point, you know he's going to get caught anyway. And it's like, for me. And it's like, bro. Bro. I wanted to see you do something. Be you are better than this, Riddler. You are. <laughs> you are a scary psycho freakazoid. Use that to your advantage. <laughs> he didn't, though. In the second half, it was just so... Do I want to say predictable? It kind of was. It was very predictable. And it was very depressing. <laughs> and not in the good predictable depressing way. It was like predictably depressing. In my opinion. But no I don't hate it. I just hate the fact that they had a lot of potential. To continue the whole mysterious enigma. Of the Riddler. Paul Dano's Riddler. And then they just were like. Maybe some point through writing the film, they all got amnesia and forgot what he actually meant to be standing for. And then they were like, hey, they use politics. Why don't we use politics? <laughs> I'm kidding, okay? But, like, seriously, I, I really did enjoy his character. And when they revealed his face, I was like, okay. <laughs> Is he, does he have a bomb or something? Like, what? Next, because he didn't really do a whole lot in the sec in the last part of the film, and before anyone says it, I will get into the climax. Which <clears throat> I'm sorry, I did not like the climax at all. The final part of the film killed it for me, and not in a good way. The film ruined its own momentum by literally taking a template. From Batman Begins slash The Dark Knight and reusing it, but except, except for some sort of random toxin. They used water for whatever reason. And it's implied that it's like poisoned water or something, but it's like, that's all you could think of? That's the best you could do was just explode all the water everywhere in Gotham and almost kill the mayor without actually making a point as to why you're doing that and show up with all this like Riddler bros like no <laughs> on a lighter note I do think Jeffrey Wright played a great Jim Gordon I really do as much as I love Gary Oldman's work I really do I think Jeffrey Wright really did one of the best bits of acting in this film. He did some amazing work with the Jim Gordon as Commissioner Jim Gordon, in my opinion. 
And I do want to address this. I feel like there was a lot of racist rhetoric that he had to deal with when he was, you know, first announced. And it just kind of sickens me because he did such a brilliant job as Jim Gordon. I really did enjoy his Jim Gordon. And if it were a much shorter film that kind of lived up to its potential. Because <laughs> even at the end of the movie, which where it lost all momentum, he was still a good character. <laughs> Like, Jim Gordon was still a likable character that you could genuinely root for. So in that way, it's like, why? Because <laughs> he did such a great job. He was a great character with stable writing throughout the entirety of the film, in my opinion. He deserved better. <laughs> but that's my opinion. I think Jeffrey Wright's Jim Gordon was great. And I think he really did deserve more appreciation than he got. He was a He's a great actor, and he did a great job with the role of Commissioner Gordon. Do I think his acting was perfect? Not necessarily. But I don't think it was bad. In my opinion, Jeffrey Wright's Commissioner Gordon was not really that bad. He was really very... What's the word I'm looking for? He stayed true to his character within the story. And that's something that even Paul Dano's Riddler couldn't do. So props to Commissioner Gordon. Because he really, he really kept his character stable and believable throughout the film. And now I don't believe, say believable in like a comic book, anti-comic book logic way. I just mean you could see his character existing in the real world and being a really good bad A a really good bad ASS detective. Like you could see it. Not just Commissioner. But he had his own detective feels. In my opinion. So I give major props to his Jim Gordon. And that is not at all to disrespect. Or hate on Gary Oldman's Jim Gordon. Who I previously. You know. Praised. I think they both did a great job. So. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> we have to talk about the cat. Okay, I love Zoe Kravitz's performance in this movie. Well, I do think the movie itself kind of loved her performance too, kind of, kind of to a fault, and I'll explain what I mean. Like the the writers and that and the actors in general, I feel like everyone can see that Zoe Kravitz is a brilliant actor or actress or whatever you wanna, whatever word is most politically correct today. But <laughs> I feel like the writing kind of got sidetracked a little bit with the cat and Falcone being her father. Honorable mention goes to Falcone's actor because he did a great job. And yes, I will con continue to pronounce his name that way. But I appreciate what they did with her and the Falcone daddy issue situation. I think it was really overall well written. And I appreciate that she didn't actually kill him, but I think the Riddler did. But, um, some sort of indirect Riddler killing, whatever. But I think Catwoman, a.k.a. Selena Kyle, played by Zoe Kravitz, was really well played. She did a great job. <laughs> well played. She did a great job. She was one of the, like, highlights of the movie for me. Because, again, similar to Jim Gordon, her character stayed, in terms of writing, she did evolve, don't get me wrong, but she stayed steadfast, stable, and believable. Her evolution from one part of the story to the next really felt genuine. Not hating on Benson now, but I personally think that Selena Kyle, Catwoman, I feel like Zoe Kravitz's performance was one of the best performances in the film overall. Like, she did a great job. I'm really, really like in love with her work in the movie. She did a brilliant job. She dumped Battinson's butt in the movie. <laughs> I mean, it seemed like a fairly amicable breakup because they didn't really have a whole lot going for them, at least from what I remember of the three-hour film. But yeah, I think she, she really did handle herself very well within the storyline, and I liked her evolution. Because she didn't totally simp for Batman, 
but she also didn't hate Batman. She didn't like in a lot of his choices, of course, <laughs> which is understandable. But she was she was overall a really well written character, and she really did execute that writing brilliantly, in my opinion. Even with the kind of needless Falcone backstory that didn't really help much, in my opinion. And side note, that's not against the actor who played Falcone. I think he did a great job as well. <laughs> like father, like daughter, I guess. <laughs> but Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman was great. I really enjoyed it. And like her acting, I really enjoyed the acting she did. And I really enjoyed her character arc overall. And I heard that she's coming back for the Batman part too, but I kind of hope she comes back as like an ex living her best life. <laughs> which I know in this version of Gotham, which is more gothic, could be s difficult to do, but I do think it's possible. I'd like to see this personally from a fan of her Catwoman. I'd like to see her move on with some other character. Like, I don't know which character. <laughs> But I like to see her move on with the, a newer character, not new to the Batman verse, but just new to the storyline. A character that could be with her in a way that Battinson can't. Because it's clear that Battinson does love her and all that jazz. But I think it's very obvious by the end that, like, they are not for each other. At least so far. They're not really meant to be yet. Now, that's not to say that they won't be, because I think with the right writing, character development, and story, they could definitely be a great couple. But it has to be developed correctly for both of them. Because I could see Zoe really being a great, great character, a great Catwoman in a sequel, you know, with the right writing, you know. I think she could be a great you know, return character, but I would also want her to really explore her life after what she went through with THE Batman. Like, I want to know more from her post-Batman situation. Does she continue as Catwoman? You know, does she return as Catwoman, but with her own motivations more thoroughly researched? Because I feel like in THE Batman, well, she did have plenty of character motivation and she was very much in her own power overall. She also at times did slightly lack her character direction. And again, that's more on the writers than on her. She did the best with what she had. So, and she had a lot more than a few other characters already mentioned. So, in my opinion. So props to her. She should have won an award, but not at the Oscars because no comment but yeah she deserved something for her <laughs> she deserved a Saturn award for her work on the Batman because she really did do a great job in my opinion and I think she played off Battinson very well I really do she and Battinson while not like a couple in the movie I don't know if they're dating in real life and I don't really care but she and Battinson in the movie clearly had very strong chemistry and they did a great job of it, of playing it through the film. It was very enjoyable to see their banter and also see their forming of romance and love and blood, 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 blood stuff I don't care about. <laughs> like, look, I'm not a hater of romance, but I'm a very happily self-partnered person, so there's that. Bum, 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 bum. Anyway, <laughs> yes, this is the soundtrack, um, honorable mention. And please correct me if I butcher this guy's name. He also did some work for Spider-Man in the MCU. But, um, Michael Gacchino? 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 Somebody in the comments, please tell me how to properly pronounce his last name. I know his first name is Michael. So I'm just going to call him Michael <laughs> to not butcher his name further. Um, he did a brilliant job with the soundtrack. I think the soundtrack was incredible. It was emotional. It was jarring. It caught your attention. It was a journey and an evolution. Basically everything that a lot of the characters lacked in the movie. <laughs> 
Everything that char certain characters were lacking within the film, the music definitely picked up a lot of the slack, in my opinion. Which is not the best thing for the film, but it is a great thing for Michael's com compositions and creative work in the film, in my opinion. I think... As a music lover, I love the soundtrack overall, especially the title track, The Batman, but also one of the latter tracks, The Great Pumpkin Pie. I see what you did there. <laughs> I see what you did there, Michael, but uh, <laughs> it's a great, it's a great soundtrack. I loved it. It really fits the theme, the mood, and the aesthetic of the Batman film. And it's also just good for whenever you're in a mood. <laughs> I'll be real, there, there were times in 2022 after watching THE Batman where I was like, I need to listen to the Batman and the Great Pumpkin Pie. <laughs> Sounds weird saying it out loud, but yeah. It's rain and vengeance. Anyway, <laughs> if you know, you know. But yes, I think that the soundtrack was incredible. 10 out of 10 for the soundtrack. And I really enjoyed it. So I definitely recommend if you like the soundtrack more than you like the movie, listen to it. <laughs> and that's not to say that the movie isn't bad, but the soundtrack was really part of the heart of the film, in my opinion. So props to Michael. I'm sorry, I don't want to butcher your last name. He'll never see this video anyway. But props to Michael's work on the Batman soundtrack. He did a great job. Okay, so my final thoughts on THE Batman 2022. Firstly, as I'm sure you probably noticed, I think it was too long given the fact that it's supposed to be an introductory type of film to the new Batman. So yeah, that 2 hour 59 minutes needs to not happen again. <laughs> Let's make it an hour and a half to 2 hours, okay? Okay. <laughs> I know nobody's gonna really actually listen to me because I don't work for Warner but still an hour and a half to two hours 30 minutes would be an more than enough time for what they did so yeah it's it is too long the pacing is off and a lot of the characters needed more development but I don't hate it I think it does already have a building legacy and probably a cult following similar to the Dark Knights not the same but similar. Lower your pitchforks, people. But I think it's a good film. I think if you haven't seen it and you're a fan of Batman, you do need to see it in full and form your own opinions. And if you have seen it and you love it, but you also see where I'm coming from in my review, please leave a nice comment down below respectfully. And if you hate it, you know, sorry to disappoint, but I don't actually hate it, and I don't think hating on it is actually a productive thing to do. Sorry. <laughs> but I do think that the movie does have a lot of issues. It didn't exactly age like fine wine for me. It aged more like milk for me. <laughs> now, granted, this is milk that had a good shelf life, mind you, but it wasn't the best milk that to have in the fridge so to speak <laughs> no offense but it did not really age well for me but I don't think it's a totally I don't think it's totally hopeless I believe if the writers write it better in the part two of the Batman and Batman hires a stunt double it could be amazing <laughs>